All right, so what we're going to do here today is uh, rough cape this elk, and for most intents and purposes, uh, this is all you're really going to need to do, like in the back country. Um, the second part of caping is finish caping, and that's where you go in and turn the ears and eyes and lips and nose and and do your fleshing and and curing of salt with salt. Um, but that's not really necessary unless you can't get the capes out or keep them cool. So if you can't do that, then yes, you would have to go ahead and finish caping it. Um, so to get to the point that we are at now, um, what I did is I just uh, made a circle around the elk from the brisket here um, all the way around, and I come right behind the hump on the back. All right, and then. Um, I come and knock the front legs off right at the joint, and then I come back with a slit right there, all right, that goes right out to this uh, cut that I made around the brisket. You know, so if you're going to save these capes, uh, don't cut clear up through that brisket when you're gutting them. It's going to be too far. You need to leave the taxidermist uh, plenty of hide to work with. I like to stop right there at the brisket when I'm caping them. All right, so that's where we are at here. So from here, we're just going to take it on off the face. Um, when you come around here, um, basically, I just came straight up the back of the neck, and I'm uh, right now I'm just probably eight inches uh, from behind the ears. So there's uh, a number of cuts that we can make to do this. Um, you can kind of do a T cut, which means you just kind of come up and then make a T to each antler. Um, you can do a Y cut like this. Um, so start six inches behind the uh, antlers and then just wide each antler. Or you can do what's called a seven cut and that's what I'm going to do today. And on a seven cut we're going to take this cut straight to that antler and then we're going to cut over to the other antler so it makes the number seven. Uh, and I think most taxidermists anymore uh, today prefer that number seven cut. Um, one less seam to sew. So got to have a pretty good sharp knife knife and when you're doing this these uh, hides on these bulls are thick so I'm just continuing right on up and I'm going to go straight to this right antler right to the burr go through the hair Whenever you're caping, you don't want to ever come down on hair because you'll cut it. You're always coming up through the hide so that you're not cutting the hair. Alright, and then once you get right to that burr, it's going to start working around and peeling that hide off. Tricky just getting it started. Kind of got to pull and then cut. And if you want, you can work it down a little bit here first. And this is where uh, a scalpel, you know, works good, really getting around these tight corners here. Okay. So another trick you can kind of do to uh, get this going here is I'm using a heavier bladed knife now. I'm just kind of getting under that and prying it up. Um, it's stuck in there pretty good to start. Working it up. There it comes. Um, another thing you can do is sometimes these really small blades. I've got a real short blade on this little Swiss Army knife that you can really get down in there with, especially right between the antlers where you don't have a whole lot of room. And you can see I'm just working it away from the pedicle there all the way around. 
So another trick that I do on some of these bigger bulls, on uh, raghorns and young bulls, you can literally just pull this away from the burrs with your fingers. Some of these bigger bulls though, it's awful hard. So you can get in here with a screwdriver and just kind of work it around and you can kind of see how it just pries that off. Do a little cut in here, down there. And then just work that screwdriver in there. Obviously, if you're in the back country and whatnot, you're probably not going to have a screwdriver. This is something you might do at the ranch or at base camp. Okay. So, before I get all the way around this, um, I'm going to make my second part of my seven cut here. All right, remember we went up the neck, we went straight to this antler. Now we're coming straight from here to this antler. So I'm right at about at that point where I can just go straight across to that other antler. Start working this flat back. Remember you're caping these critters, try and leave as much of the meat on the head as you can and that's going to save you a lot of flushing at the end, or save the taxidermist a lot of flushing. Alright, so I'm starting to get these worked around to the front now, as you can see. I'm just about ready to go through the ear. So, I like to go right behind that chunk of meat. I'm just going to come right down through here. And you're going to go through the ear canal. Which is going to be a hole there, but don't worry about that. There's the ear canal right there. That's fine. There again, if you can leave most of this meat on the head. It's going to save you lots of flesh and later, especially if you have to finish cape this thing. Get right back into the skin there. Now you can see we're just coming right down on the side of the face here. Cutting some in there and then push it with my thumb. <laughs> so we're getting close to the eye. There's the eye socket there, but we'll get that other side worked down a bit first and then we'll show you how to go through the eye. So here we're going to go through this other side here. There's the ear canal. Right through that ear canal. Right back to the skin. And if 
you do a good job here, there's a little thin black membrane right along the edge of this that should stay uh, with the cape. And if you're getting a lot of hair still attached to the burr back here, you're not getting really behind that little thin black membrane. Alright, so we brought this kind of flap um, from here forward and we're just about all the way around these antlers. It's got a little bit more to do. Okay, pop that one loose. And we're all the way around that side. So pop that one loose. Now we can start bringing it down off the face. side. All right, and we're ready to come over the eye, basically. Work this down just a little bit more here. So when you're coming through the eye, you can feel the uh, eye socket bone there. And what I like to do is I like to come around to the front stick my finger right in the corner of that eye. And that way I know exactly where I'm cutting. I'm not gonna put any extra holes in this thing. Okay, I'm gonna just feel my finger there. I'm coming right through the eye. Down below these eyes is a tear duct, and it's a good inch deep on these elk, so you really got to get down into that pocket of skin and get behind there. And also right in here, you're going to cut through just a little tiny channel. That's the tear duct. Um, part of the tear duct is right there. All right. Now we're starting to get into that tear duct and it's a deep pocket of skin so you really got to stay on the bone. Let's keep pulling. So that, that whole pocket comes out of there. If you do screw up and poke a little hole in that tear duct, it's not the end of the world. Taxidermists can fix about anything anymore. So now we're just cruising right on down to the nose. So on this side, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to peel it back, stick my finger right in the corner of the eye. All right, and then I know exactly where my finger is, I know exactly where the corner of that eye socket is, so I'm not cutting a hole in there.
little blocks part of the tear duct coming out of the eye. It's no biggie. Alright, so here again we're going to get into this tear duct. Stay against the bone. It's a deep pocket of skin in there. Stick your fingers through this eye if you want. It should pull a little easier. Take your time, go slow. Not any knife will work. A lot of guys ask me what knife I prefer. These are just uh, Victor Knox paring knives. Um, real flexible. Uh, nice for entire elk, actually. Easy to sharpen, hold a really good aid, edge. Just good all around knives. If you lose one, you're out. Five bucks, no biggie. All right. So work it down. I'm gonna flop this over a bit. Put it down under the throat some. And leave all this meat on the head. Okay, so we brought it down about to uh, here which is about where the corner of the mouth starts. And at this point, what I like to do, is I'll come around and I'll make a gum cut so that when I come off the nose, I know exactly where I am. So I'm just coming right along this gum line. All right, and on the bottom, same thing. Okay, and I'll kind of tip this up so you can see. All right, so I'm gonna tip this up so you can see. Now, this is the cut I made. I'm just gonna go right along this pallet plate. Just making a cut. This is a lot easier to do on the outside than it is once you start coming off the nose. You can skin it back a little ways if you want. Just making that one little cut will help you out. Bottom, same thing. I'm just kind of coming along the gum line there. I'm going to go right below these teeth. You know, and here again, if you want to skin it back a little bit, you can. Try and leave as much of those lips and gums as you can so the taxidermist can tuck those into the form. Um, especially if you pl plan on doing like an open mouth bugling type mount uh, where you can really see into the mouth, you're going to want a lot of lip and gum left so that they can really tuck it in their ways. Uh, I set it up on the tailgate now. It's a little easier when you have the weight of this uh, cape kind of pulling and helping you out a little um, in the back country or wherever, you know, if you can kind of set it up on a log or stump. Um, that's helpful too. Uh, I like to come back quite a ways here on these jowls, all right, and leave plenty of jowl um, here again, especially if you plan on doing like an open mouth bugle type mount. Um, leave those jowls on there.
you now you can see that's the cut I made um, before with the mouth open and I'm hooking right into that now and I just kind of follow it off the nose and we'll flip it over into the other side just working it off the nose start you can see the jowl muscles clear back in here you know leave plenty of jowl there Okay, when you come off the nose, you can kind of feel where this is bone and then it turns to cartilage. It's come straight down through that cartilage. You can take off some of that excess cartilage later, but leave plenty of the cartilage on there again so the taxidermist can stuff that up into the nose. out leave extra okay and then right off the chin and we're done about wrecking a good cape go to a butcher shop and ask them for a couple of cow heads to practice on